I'm Lee Hornsby. I'm the Lead Development and Partnerships Manager at Creative UK. Um, my remit at Creative UK, um, I work with, interact with um, predominantly the higher education and further education sectors. So we have a network of about 70 different universities and colleges um, and I work with them directly, particularly around creative skills, qualifications, and education as well. So really quite active in that space and thinking about careers. But also what's really important, what we do at Creative UK is connect those dots into industry as well. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about our wider network in a few minutes time. Uh, my name is Chris Phillip. Uh, I'm I work as program manager at Creative UK. I manage our creative enterprise program. That's a business support and investment program for the screen industry companies that are based in the English regions outside of the outside of London. Uh, what what exactly that means is that we work with companies all the way from um, accelerator level. So I have an idea. Uh, I have a business. How do I actually make this viable into um, into a business that can be invested in all the way through through scale ups uh, and investment readiness? So we, as I said, we work across the screen industries. That's film, TV, games, immersive animation and VFX uh, and creative enterprise in and of itself is funded by uh, the BFI. My background is coming from the games industry and that's what I'm going to be talking a little bit about later, uh, later in the presentation. I, <clears throat> I also would like to mention that for the most part, everything that we do, as, as Lee mentioned, in addition to connecting the dots, is um, data-led and partnership uh, and focused on partnerships. So that's part of why when you're going to have a look at our initiatives as Creative UK, most likely for, for most of them, you're going to see that they are in partnership with a combined authority or with an industry body or with a, a member of the, of the private sector. So what we do generally is that we, uh, in the support strand that I'm taking, that I'm part of is we help companies grow and become viable businesses by connecting the dots, by making those connect, by making those introductions, and by being able to provide expert support. Great, thanks, Chris. Um, so yeah, a bit like I mentioned, what I do is is focus on creative skills, careers, education, but because of the nature of our work and some of the things that Chris has just chatted about as well, one of the main things that we do, especially with our university um, partners, is try and provide some insight into what's going on to, in the creative industries now, but also in the future as well. And it's that side of things that we'll more be focusing on over the course of this session. Um, so what are we going to be focusing on? So this was kind of the context setting first session, really. So that's really going to be my aim, particularly, is trying to paint the broadest, biggest picture of what actually I mean when I talk about the creative industries, what Creative UK means when we talk about the creative industries. So trying to unpack that a little bit for everyone. Um, and there is not a great deal of time to do that. So um, I'm going to kind of confound you with a whole bunch of statistics and figures, um, but I'm sure the slides will get shared with you afterwards. Um, but hopefully give you an idea of exactly what we talk about when we're talking about the creative industries and then hone in a little bit more on some of the things we do, but particularly around um, exactly what Tasha said at the start there, um, what's going on in the immersive world. So thinking about creative technologies um, and how that links into the wider creative industries as well. Um, but some of you might be familiar with Creative UK. We are two organisations that join together. So Creative Industries Federation and Creative England. Um, and we came together as Creative UK at the back end of last year more formally, but it's been going on behind the scenes for a couple of years. But we are a group of diverse and inclusive professionals who believe in the power of creativity and the creative industries to change lives, placing creativity at the heart of UK's culture, economy and education system. Creative England and the Creative Industries Federation join forces to coalesce our collective capabilities, using creativity to shape the UK's social, cultural and economic future. By merging the industry insights and advocacy work of the Federation with the practical support and investment work of Creative England, we're now perfectly positioned to have, vis have visible impact and drive real change. Very inspirational. Um, so being connectors is, 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 our, is our big thing. That's what we do, um, try and join the dots. Um, so just with the genre of today's, um, today's topics in mind, we work with people like uh, TIGA, the Independent Games um, Association, UKI, 
which Chris might mention a little bit later too, British Film Institute, um, but also big industry partners like the BBC, Netflix, Facebook, Warner Brothers, Google, TikTok. So all of these people who are really, really invested and driving forward a lot of that innovation that we'll be talking about and what you guys want to hear about today as well. Um, so very, very quickly, I did just want to show you a quick video um, just unpacking Creative UK. It's a bit of a kind of blockbuster sizzle, two minutes, um, but just to give you a sense of who we are, and then I'll dig right into the, the, the bigger picture stuff. Creativity is a power to be used for all it's worth. It's the pin in the map that puts our locations on screen. It's catalyzing impact and driving real change. Here's to homegrown craft and grassroots talent. Cheers to our people, our places, and nurturing the planet. It's where our roots lie, what we'll always be about. Putting creators on a pedestal for the whole world to see. Exercising grit in the fight to push back boundaries. Placing diverse talent at the epicenter of our creative ecosystem. Demolishing paradigms to ignite every person's creative potential. Penning a new narrative for a world where all ideas are equal. Uniting voice, connecting minds, unlocking prosperity. Supporting them. Supporting you. Supporting, supporting each, each other. other. To mobilise, make waves and exercise autonomy. We're the organisation you've been waiting for and this is our plan. To reimagine the creative industries by investing in ideas, catalyzing connections, rallying support and championing innovation. We are innovators, disruptors, it's in our DNA. We do things differently. We are Creative UK. We are here for those who dare to imagine. I haven't got a great deal of time this morning, so this might feel like I'm machine gunning you a whole load of statistics and figures, but hopefully this is useful in kind of painting that bigger picture context that I was talking about. So what, the, what actually do we mean when we talk about the UK's creative industries? Um, there are nine different creative subsectors, and these are the definitions that DCMS use. Um, so all very distinct of each other, but also tons and tons of overlap. So particularly with today in mind um, and immersive technology, some of it might fall into this IT software, computer services and video games. Um, some of it fall, falls into film, TV, video, radio and photography, but it's much broader than that. There's stuff happening at the intersection of all these different subsectors um, that is really, really exciting, but also makes it hard, hard to define what we actually are as an industry, which is a challenge that we have. Um, a third of our workforce is self-employed, um, and that goes up to 50% in certain subsectors like music and up to 70% in certain subsectors uh, like performing and visual arts as well. Uh, so one in seven of all self-employed people in the UK are working in the creative industries. 90% of creative businesses employ nine people or fewer. So there's a whole multitude of SMEs and micro businesses um, that aren't those household names, but actually make up the majority of what we call and define as the creative industries in the UK today. Um, one in 10 new startups are creative businesses as well. So in 2019, 40,000 new creative businesses were born. So that kind of idea of us being a very entrepreneurial industry um, and again, lending itself to that prevalence of freelancers, um, that kind of paints a picture there as well. We are very, can't really, you can make that out. We're very bottom heavy in the creative industries. Um, so you can see here, this is the distribution of employment across the creative industries in the UK um, as of last year. So you can see in the south, particularly with London and the southeast, um, there's tons and tons of creative industries there and it's a little bit less so in the regions. Although I would say that over the last 10 years or so, it has been growing exponentially in the other regions across the UK as well, but it's still bottom heavy, like I mentioned. Um, so our ecology is very complicated and we're very unique, we're unlike other sectors um, and that's why it's quite hard for policy makers, decision makers um, to wrap their heads around us and that's a challenge that we, we have to fight and, and deal with every day. Um, and of course there's lots of nuances and some of these figures will be slightly different when you dig into the different creative subsectors like I mentioned but hopefully top down that paints a little bit of a picture of the UK's creative industries. Um, that's what our makeup is like. Um, I did just want to talk a little bit about how big we are as well. Um, and this really helps with 
championing what we do across the creative industries and really being proud of who we are, which is really important to us at Creative UK. So just again, to throw some more big numbers at you and figures, um, we were contributing £116 billion to the UK economy, which is more than aerospace, automotive, life sciences and oil and gas sectors combined. Um, so that's equivalent to about £13.2 million per hour being generated into the UK um, gross value added growing at four times the rate of the wider economy. Um, for every one pound, the creative industries contribute directly to the economy, a further 50p is generated elsewhere in the wider economy as well. Um, so I, I won't finish off the, the, those bullet points there, but just to give you a sense of the scale of how big we are across the UK at the moment. And again, um, in terms of global exports as well, and again, particularly focusing on this IT software, computer service and video games, this just paints a little picture of um, how active we are in generating income um, into the country by exporting our creative services and goods across the globe. Um, so I didn't today, the purpose of today wasn't to talk about the pandemic, um, but it would be remiss for me not to after the last two years. So just very, very quickly, and actually in the context of thinking about the themes of today as well, um, obviously the last two years has been incredibly difficult for the creative industries, particularly certain subsectors that rely on footfall or where there's a prevalence of freelancers. It's been tough, you've seen all the headlines. Um, so these are just two top-down figures um, that we uh, worked with Oxford Economics on uh, last year, um, just to just to illustrate that really. So 12 billion um, of our GVA was lost in 2020 alone. And there's a little bit of a regional breakdown there of what that looks like. Um, and we, we, it looked like there was about 113,000 creative jobs that were set to be lost by the end of 2021. Um, but the reason I mentioned this, like I said, I didn't want to talk too much about the pandemic is that when we focus in on this certain subsector, so IT software, computer services and video games, it actually starts telling us a little bit of a different picture. Um, so what we know about this particular subsector is that it's very, very primed for quick and rapid growth. Um, and within the context of the pandemic, that kind of um, sets the scene for that. So in Prior to the pandemic, we were contributing, this certain subsector was contributing 47 billion pounds in GVA and employing 775,000 people. And again, pumping more money into the wider economy as well. Um, but it actually experienced the smallest drop off during the pandemic um, and a temporary drop off of just 1%. And it actually created 70,000 new jobs. So it's really one of the only creative subsectors that wavered very, very slightly throughout the pandemic, but is, is primed to grow absolutely rapidly over the next five years and plus. Um, so yeah, here generating another 10 billion more in GVA, creating another 146,000 new jobs. Um, creative technology companies in the UK raised nearly a billion pounds in venture capital investment in 2020, which is a 22% in increase from 2019. Um, and that amount of money is more than what energy technology companies generated in, in investments as well. Um, and we're third in the world for creative technology venture capitalist investment behind the US and China um, and so on and so forth. And you can carry on for ages looking at trends and looking at how quickly we're primed to grow. Um, and I'm just conscious I'm going to take up all of our time and I want to hand over to Chris. And so I'm going to try and then fly through this. But essentially, what are we talking about when we talk about this subsector? Um, I've nicked a, a little bit of a quote and butchered it slightly from um, a Tech Nation report, which was published recently, and I do recommend you all checking that out. But if you think about all of those new technologies that we're going to be hearing and seeing about today, so augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, video games, behind all of them are very complex technologies, and it's a complex technological delivery medium for something that is actually quite simple, um, which is a quintessential human thing, is that we want an audience to be able to experience something that we create. Um, and as part of that, we have other disciplines going into that. So design, user experience, user interfaces, storytelling, actors, actresses, music, lighting, all those different mediums and artistic creative ways of doing things need to all be involved in pushing that technology forward and making it useful. And that's what we're seeing at the moment. Um, and if you start then spinning that out into other areas of the creative economy and other sectors as well, so things like retail, heritage, all these different ways that you can apply what's going on in these sectors at the moment and today and in the future, things start to get even more exciting. Um, 
there are barriers. Um, the skills landscape, we need to make sure that um, you know, we're, we're, we're priming a workforce ready to go into these areas that are moving and growing so rapidly. Um, the financing infrastructure is, is not catching up with where we are. So access to finance for creative businesses and entrepreneurs in this space and other creative spaces. Um, we're working on different ideas that we're pitching to government to say, this isn't quite up to where we want it to be to make sure that we can realize that growth potential um, and various other bits and pieces that need work and infrastructure around them. And that can look like various different things, but it can include collaborations, networks, research projects. And we can see lots of examples of that happening already. Now, I don't have time to go into all of these in much detail, um, but I just wanted to pull out a few really exciting ones from recent years that some of you are probably familiar with. So there's the Creative Industries Clusters Programme. Um, so nine different locations across the UK where research came together with um, all of the stuff I've been talking about to forge ahead with getting businesses to start using and interacting with these new technologies. XR Stories is in York. That was one, that's an example of, of one of those projects. Um, and then we've got things happening all across the UK. So the High 3 Network, which is around London and the South East, the Southwest Creative Technology Network, Centre for Immersive Technologies, which is at University of Leeds, Creative Estuary, which is around Kent and Essex. All of these projects are a combination of businesses, local authorities, combined authorities, which is what Chris will talk a little bit about shortly, but universities and researchers and academics. So it's bringing all those different groups together um, to work on bits and pieces of everything that I've just talked about. Um, and even though I felt like I've talked about them really, really quickly, I've definitely spoke for too long. So I'm going to hand over to Chris now. <laughs> cool. Thanks a lot for that, Lee. So the way that Creative UK works behind the scenes is that we are four departments. Champion and Connect are two of them, and Lee spoke at length about, uh, about them. And then the other two are Support and Invest. Together within Creative UK, we're able to not only connect the dots, but also um, <clears throat> give the people who are the change makers and who are the creators the resources that they need in order for them to create a thriving ecosystem. And in order to do that, we work and actively, actively consult with the trade industry bodies, the um, academic institutions, as well as the businesses themselves. So. Uh, as, as Lee mentioned, not only within the, within the creative industries, not only do we um, have a voice, but also we actively consult with uh, trade bodies like Yuki and Taiga for games, like Bektu for film and TV, the Fashion Council, uh, and we are a part of the Creative Industries Council. And what happens is that if we stand together with uh, a common voice and a common agenda, then the government listens, then the DCMS puts more money into the actual creative industries and it is able to really help catalyze the growth for all of us, not just for cybersecurity, for example. Um, and in order to do that, we also run a lot of reports. So as Lee mentioned, one of the, two of the initiatives that are hopefully going to make it on the, um, on the desks of important lawmakers in the next year or so are an access to finance report that investigates how companies in the creative industries actually find the money that helps them employ people, that helps them innovate and that helps them become sustainable. And another one that focuses on freelancers. As Lee mentioned, 90% of the people who work in the creative industries are freelancers. However, freelancers in and of themselves have very little, uh, very few protections under the law. You won't have statutory um, paternity uh, and maternity pay. You won't have statutory sick pay if you are a freelancer. You need to think about all of those on your own and kind of like budget for that. And when you're a 24 year, year old that just wants to go out there and like perform, that's not necessarily something that you think about. So that's part of, uh, part of our package of things that we're putting in front of government over the next year or so. As I said at the beginning, we are data informed and partnership led. So for example, uh, just to hone in a little bit on the games industry um, that I know a little bit more uh, about, this, these are quotes from a report that uh, Yuki launched. Uh, it's called the Yuki Games Industry Census. They did one in 2021 and then another one now in 2022. And these were some of their findings. 
only 10% of the games industry actually wants to work full time from the office in the future. We have um, 80, uh, sorry, 90% of the people who work, uh, of the workers in the games industry identify as white in terms of ethnic groups, which is not ideal when we are talking about the diversity, uh, the diversity of the industry from that point of view. 18% uh, of the workers in the games industry identify as being neurodivergent. So all of these things, uh, and this is just from one report that, that Yuki has done. Uh, we also take in other reports from, for example, from the PEC um, or from uh, BECTU and other bodies, and we build all of that data into our partnerships. Something that we see at the moment, for example, within the games industry, is that you have a number of studios that are trialing four, four day work weeks, some of them with a lot of success. Um, another trend that we see is a remote first approach to working, which in turn, in in conjunction with the research uh, ability that the industry has and that academics like many of you can add by working with bodies like Creative UK, like Yuki and the companies themselves, we see that it actually increases the amount of diversity in the games industry, especially when you're looking at people who are based in relatively remote and disconnected areas of the country. So for example, the Northeast, the East Midlands, the East of England, the Southwest, people who wouldn't otherwise consider working in the games industry if they had to commute all the way to Guildford from say Devon are now considering joining the games industry because they only need an internet connection. Um, another thing that we are, we're seeing is worker-owned game studios. So this is part of a wider trend of worker, uh, of, uh, worker democracy at the moment that's taking, hold, uh, that's taking root in the games industry. Us2, which is the studio that was behind Monument Valley, the mobile game, for example, just announced last week that they're now 67% worker-owned uh, and they shifted their corporate policy to, f to uh, focus on that. People want to own the things that they make in the games industry. And then we also see a high level of mergers and acquisitions. I think uh, possibly some of you have heard about Activision Blizzard being the people who make uh, Diablo and World of Warcraft being bought by Microsoft about a month ago. And uh, as I'm sure that some of you know as well, NFTs and blockchain technology are on the minds of a lot of people in the games industry um, <coughs> at the moment. So what do we do with that data? We go out there, we talk with all of these industry bodies, and then what exactly happens? Well, a big part of Creative UK is that we um, are program managers. We build programs based on the needs of the industries who we support. So these are a few of them uh, that we currently run. Creative Enterprise, the program that I'm program manager for, is the biggest one and is uh, uh, the most intensive one when you're looking at how we work with, with these companies. We have, I think, nine programs that span film and TV, games, creative technology, um, all across, like from early stage to investment readiness um, level. And we work with those companies. We put them in peer-led sessions that help people who would otherwise be really great craftspeople. So for example, amazing producers for film and TV, amazing software programmers, but they don't necessarily have the business acumen or don't necessarily understand the investment world. As an example, we teach them how investors think. We teach them how to create a safe culture for their companies. We teach them how to prepare a cash flow that uh, an accountant isn't going to balk at. Um, and we also work a lot, uh, the second part of what I mentioned, data informed, partnership led, is we work a lot with local councils and with partners, mainly because uh, we know that we can do it all on our own and partly because it's an, a much easier way to access funding, as I'm sure some of you know if you've ever tried to access funding. So we work with uh, the uh, DCMS, funded, uh, DCMS funded program in Wakefield together with like the, the local council as well as uh, as well as a number of others across Manchester, uh, Manchester and Cornwall. And this is an example of one of the programs that we're working on at the moment that also has subtitles and that I can talk over while it runs. So 
we, uh, we noticed that, uh, or rather we're working in partnership with Digital Catapult and with Explore, which is uh, a production park up in Wakefield. And we're going to be running a two day boot camp, getting about 30 to 50 uh, creative companies in the screen sectors, game companies, film companies, creative technology companies, putting them together and actually focusing on collaboration um, and <coughs> get them to network with each other get them to run mini uh, ideation jams. And then at the end, together with Digital Catapult, together with the BFI and the Innovate UK, we're going to have a sit down and actually talk about, okay, you're here, you have some ideas about how to collaborate, you understand where we're coming from, but what exactly can you take part in? So we're all going to, all of these four organizations are gonna be talking about funding opportunities, and business support opportunities for the businesses who are taking part in that. That's just one example of something that we saw uh, people wanted to do more of. We saw the resources through our connections and then we were able to say, okay, let's run a two-day event here with one of our partners. So yeah, data-informed, partnership-led, uh, we champion, connect, support, uh, and invest for the games industry. And you can email us if you want. <laughs> yeah, and I just also wanted to say just again, a call to action or if you're thinking kind of how might I benefit from this I guess so Torch University have come on board as members you know they're officially connected to Creative UK now you know that's one of the reasons why we've come down today but um, so I'm attached to some of those um, research projects and networks that I flashed up earlier and um, you know I'm on the steering board for two of them we're linked into Innovate UK we've got lots of connections we've got lots of industry insights knowledge connections if there's anything that you want to reach out and chat to us about or something that you're wanting to get off the ground or you want a, 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 a letter of support for a research bid that you're putting together you know whatever it might look like and you want some of the insights that we've just kind of really only very very briefly been able to touch on today as kind of a context setter um, then yeah please do get in touch get in touch with your colleagues at Torch and get in touch with us and we'd be happy to have a conversation.